All right, this is an open letter to Joe Rogan. This is bigger than me, so let's just fucking do this. If by some fucking miracle this ends up in front of you and, and you watch this and you give me the chance to just say what I need to say, I, I will try to make this as short as possible, I promise. <sighs> well, look, uh, you're worried about the world. I'm worried about the state of the world. Like 90% of the guests you have on your show, you know, express a very similar sentiment. And uh, over 10 years ago, uh, I started to really build this concern. And uh, I, I've been just kind of watching, right? Just silently watching how things are unfolding, how things happen. I've worked for multiple uh, corporations uh, every single corporate environment I've been in has been corrupt on some level. Uh, storing information we're not supposed to have. Storing credit cards we're not supposed to have. Uh, storing personal information without encrypting it. I mean, violations of all sorts of laws and, and ordinances, right? I've overheard meetings where things were explained and said that I almost couldn't believe. Uh, just, just bad stuff. Like, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but the more I watched how, how this all works, why things are the way we, they are, why people go hungry, why we have, you know, homeless people, why there's unemployment, uh, what sense does that make? You know, why there's corruption, you know, why education is, is not doing what it's supposed to do, why we continue to teach just nonsense to our children. Uh, recently, there's this new replacement program for D.A.R.E., and I've had to re-educate my daughter every time she came home from school because what they were teaching her <laughs> completely flew in the face of what current science tells us. And uh, I feel like we're making progress in some areas and just kind of just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> faster and faster decline in other areas. What I'm trying to say here is uh, for the last four years, I quit work. So for the last four years, I haven't had a regular income except for a few contracts, you know, that I've picked up here and there. But the reason I quit working for other people was because I wanted to really dig into what's, what's going on. And I found something. And the problem with what I have found is like in a cult, when there's a cult, there's a belief system, there's ideas, there's concepts that people take as a total, full, complete truth. They don't question it, uh, they just go with it, you know, especially in cults that have just been that way. Look at, you know, like North Korea. They believe the crazy shit and it's just because they have been told that since they were kids, since they were born. So have you ever wondered, if there's something like that to our world, if there's something that is so ingrained in our minds and in our experience that we haven't stopped to question it. Uh, imagine a group of people that have lived inside a building their entire life, they know nothing of the outside except that since their birth, they've been told not to open any of the doors or any of the windows because the demons that haunt the outside world will come in and wreak havoc. So nobody ever does. But after some time, the oxygen begins to wear thin, people are having a hard, <laughs> having a hard time breathe, you know, breathing, and, and it's just turned into this kind of like festering weirdness, and everybody is terrified of opening the windows or opening any of the doors, because they truly, honestly believe that the best way to continue living is by just avoiding the outside. Then one day somebody says, you know, I, I know how to fix your problems. Seriously, all you have to do is just crack a window. Crack that, oxygen's gonna come in, air's gonna come in, people will be able to breathe again. You know, all, all the humidity that transmits diseases in here will, will diminish because, you know, there's it's not like 80% humidity and, you know, just, it's going to fix 90% of your problems. <laughs> they just laugh at me. 
What? You kidding me? Nine hundred. You're stupid. You're trying to you're trying to sell us a silver bullet. Is, is that is that what it is? You're you're trying to sell us something that you know doesn't exist. You get out of here, motherfucker. You know what I mean? That's kind of like what I discovered. So, um, <laughs> so let me just quickly kind of, uh, to the best of my ability, go over this. The reason why I am sending you this video, whether or not you see it, I, I don't know if you see it. I hope you do. And I hope you listen, like really listen to what I'm saying because I don't have a platform. I don't. I've been nerding out, writing code, like building simulations, trying to figure out how all this shit's working, you know, teaching myself like more than half of my day is reading research papers, taking courses, uh, learning more about economics, learning more about, you know, thermodynamics and physics and just like higher mathematics to help me like, you know, get all this stuff worked out. Cause this is fucking complicated, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a man of little means right now, you know, and this is important. And you know, what's a chance some some random dude out in the middle of nowhere discovers that this one little thing is wrong with society? And if you switch it, just just nick it one way, you know, pull the linchpin, everything will get fixed. Well, not everything, but the majority of them. And it's not because it's a silver bullet; it's because the majority of our problems spawn from the same source. Without further ado, let me explain what I have discovered. I mean, dude, I still need to do a lot more research and I need to be able to find a way to generate enough capital to hire a scientific advisory board with physicists, economists, sociologists, uh, psychologists, and other machine learning experts. Though I wouldn't call myself an expert yet, but, but I'm getting there. I'm writing my own machine learning library as we speak. Anyway. Here's the thing, if you have not heard of the three functions of money, feel free to look them up. Uh, there used to be four functions, uh, only, you know, the fourth function was something like it, it allows for uh, the, the postponement of payment or, or something, like that, something to do with, you know, debt and, and paying back uh, with interest or whatnot. And it turns out that the other already established functions of money combined in certain ways kind of spells out that fourth function, so they drop the fourth one. But, so the three functions of money are, one, a store of value, okay, which means money provides a unit, okay, a, mon a monetary unit, right, which allows you to store value. So you sell a bushel of apples, get 20 bucks for it, you can now store that value without having to you know, worry about your apples deteriorating or turning into mush. You know, you, you can stick it in your cupboard for, for the next year, year and a half, and chances are at the end of those next few years, it'll be worth relatively the same amount. You know, minus inflation and that sort of thing. Uh, so store of value, unit of account. Unit of account is just that it has, that, that it is agreed an agreed upon unit that we can all agree upon that serves as as um, something that we can keep records with, something that we can you know ledger and and balance our books and, and you know a unit that we can assign different prices to everything. Okay, so a unit of account, store of value, unit of account, and a medium of exchange. Money is something that we can use to exchange for goods, services, you know, whatever. It is a central omnipotent sort of device that we can use to do, you know, make trade with anything. You don't have to try to figure out how you're going to barter. Uh, if you want a dozen eggs and all you have is a cow, you, you know, that's, that creates a problem, right? So that, that's medium of exchange, right? It, it's a core fundamental unit that we can use to exchange for anything. Here's the problem. Two of the three functions of money violate three of the four laws of thermodynamics. Now the third law, or uh, the third function of money violates a couple laws of thermodynamics sometimes. It, it depends on the context and how it's used. So let me review this because what, in the simulations I've run, the, and 
okay, this is a problem, like a very big problem. Like, uh, uh, my, my estimate with, with what I've kind of been shuffling through and trying to, you know, crunch numbers so far and everything is that about 80 to 90% of all labor performed across the market, like across a whole, you know, globe is, is technically wasted because the two of the three functions of money that violate three of the four laws of thermodynamics, what's happening is we, we think we found a way to kind of sidestep thermodynamics to, to keep entropy from really happening. But what in fact is happening is that in our minds, we think we're, you know, creating value and turning back time and, and making money off of, you know, whatever. But what's actually happening, happening is that we are, <laughs> uh, we think we're doing this, but because you can't fucking trick the universe, we are forced into situations where we actually amplify the entropy of the system. So, um, I'm, I'm, again, there's a lot of research to do and I've been doing this for four years and even with a team, I, I'm, I'm thinking another 10 years of like really serious, solid research needs to happen. But I, I think I can say with some fair amount of certainty that simply the use of money is the biggest contributor to global warming. That sounds crazy, but let me walk you through it. <laughs> and I, I, I know I'm, I, I told you I'd, I, I would try to make this really short. But dude, this is important. And like I said, you've got a platform. I don't. And not only does this need to be verified, I need to finish this research and I need to find people who will actually listen to what I'm saying because this is a big problem. Like, a big problem. The biggest problem that we have. Have you ever wondered why it is that we have more than enough food to feed every single person on the planet? Like, well, yet we can't seem to manage it. I mean, it all comes down to the fact that that the, the, the core nature of money is a literal attempt at sidestepping thermodynamics. Now, of course, you know, thousands of years ago when money was first kind of developed and, and started to be used, they, they knew nothing of this. But now that we are at an intellectual level where we can realize this, and look at it and, and actually see that the use of money has a very real effect on the entropy of our physical system, we need to take this seriously because we are in a situation where, <laughs> where we can't afford to fuck around anymore. You know this, I know this, the world knows this, but nobody knows what to do. I am telling the world right now, I'm telling you right now, there's a very, big possibility that there is one thing to do and that it would solve the majority of our problems and mitigate the rest. Sounds like a silver bullet, but it's not. It's that we've got a core mechanism or device, whatever you want to say, that we have not put it together, that it causes all of these problems. And we just have never, you know, keyed into it because we haven't had the information we haven't had the discovery we haven't had you know money has been so integral into how we operate that to even think of removing it and replacing it with something else is fucking blasphemy you know however i believe i know not only how to replace it <laughs> but how to replace it in a way that we will be saving a lot of energy. We will be producing or, or advancing orders of magnitude faster. Bad science, gone. Shitty pharmaceutical companies that are doing shitty things like, like you and uh, this guy was um, John Abramson were just talking about that I was just listening to. This is what made me decide to just make this. Uh, and, and you were talking about motivation, right? Well, money, we think, motivates. 
So if we're going to replace money, we need to do it with something that motivates, right? The truth is money doesn't motivate very well. It motivates up to a point, but then after that point, it starts to demotivate. It starts to cause worse performance. So we have to look at what, what can motivate, what's better than money? What can really motivate? Well, in psychology, the self-determination theory of intrinsic motivation tells us everything we fucking need to know. So uh, <laughs> we've got the self-determination of intrinsic motivation, SDT is what they say for short, and which can easily be orchestrated by a private network of AI systems, right? So that it's not, it would be like Google Home or, or Google Assistant, except it's not scraping your information and selling it for profit. 90% of the shit that we are dealing with, 90% of the bullshit, all of the pollution, everything is because our motivations have been sidetracked from what is natural, what is real, what is what what it, what nature has provided us with, our drive for, you know, survival, our drive to be safe, our drive to feel loved, our, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In fact, uh, the self-determination theory is is like a modern extension of Maslow's hierarchy. At, at any rate, you know what? I, this is going too long. Just, I would love to talk to you about this. I don't want to be in a show or anything like that. I just need somebody with a platform to listen to me. And if I can convince you, if I can convince anybody <laughs> that, I mean, do you know how hard it is? I have sent so many e emails to professors, to all sorts of people and without even looking at my material I can't tell you the number of times where they just uh, there's no such thing as a, as a silver bullet boy you're you're full of shit you know I can't tell you how many times that's happened and they won't even look at it or even respond you know except for a few that have which are like I, I've become friends with uh, one of them. We've bantered quite a bit. Really excellent guy. I, I don't want to drop his name because I don't want that. This is very uh, controversial, so I don't want to, you know, drag his name in, into this and, and have him have to deal with any kind of side effects at his institution or, or anything like that because of my relationship with him. So yeah, I'm not going to say anything about who he is. Or she. <laughs> At any rate, um, his work has been cited. Let's see, let's give a figure that's not going to. Uh, between, let's say his work has been cited about 50,000 times, give or take, uh, you know, 20 or 30,000. Yeah, that, that, that works. Okay. So, uh, highly respected, very intelligent man or woman. Uh, that's 50% or whatever. But what I'm trying to say is he's vetted it. And uh, there have been a, a, well, so there's been another, you know what? Uh, it's been vetted. Okay, and, and the, none of these guys that are like really smart in their field have found anything with my set of hypotheses that they think is counter to anything that we understand scientifically today. Uh, so, look, dude, th this is taking longer than I wanted it to. Um, I'm telling you, okay, I I'm just telling you, and I, I need, I need, I don't know. I'm so frustrated because I need more resources. I need more time. I need uh, people that I can work with. I there's so much work to do, and there's not a lot of time left. Like we're quickly fucking shit up. And it not only uh, here's the best part about my my setup hypotheses, right? In using methods of igniting intrinsic motivation we can begin to create individuals that are self-actualizing. Maslow himself estimated that less than 1%, less than 1% of the population is a continually self-actualizing individual. 
But we also know that self-actualizing individuals aren't greedy, they're more interested in helping other people, uh, you know, they, they have this kind of deep inner need to, to help the community. People that are self-actualizing are amazing, their, their performance, the quality of their work far exceeds the quality of the average person's, you know, daily work. Uh, so yeah, production, quality, all skyrocket. And it, it's all possible by getting rid of money. And it's a very complicated set of hypotheses I've put together. Like I said, it it includes, you know, like Google level AI, it includes... Time to get ready for tomorrow. Yeah, that's my time to start getting ready for tomorrow. I need to go sell my coffee out and, you know, get my clothes ready and everything. But anyway, so I'm gonna stop. What I'm saying is, if my original set of hypotheses don't play out, something will. There is a way to do this. I'm, I'm very certain of this. I've been studying this shit for over, well, for about four years now. I've been putting, I've put a lot on the line to do this, you know? And it's not because I want to make money off of it. You know, I, I just want a better world. I want a world that my daughter can grow up in and not worry about the cataclysms that, that are fast tracked on their way here because of how, how shitty we have been, how poorly we have kept our planet. So I'm talking about, you know, no more homeless. Everybody is employed because when you don't have pay, you don't have that, that restriction. You don't have, you know, oh, we can't hire you because whatever, we can't hire you because this and that. Now, what, instead of voting with your dollar, you would vote, you vote by working for somebody. Oh, I'm going to give you my services because I want to, because I want to be involved with what you guys are working on because I am intrinsically motivated because I have everything that I need. I've got all the education. I can have all the education that I want. And I love that shit. I love working on that stuff. Even the dirty jobs, people love doing dirty jobs or at least figuring out how to make them not dirty. You know, like I'm talking about a, a world full of that kind of mentality because once you get most people self actualizing, they don't care if somebody <laughs> isn't working for a week or if somebody, you know, goes off on vacation, it's not like feeling jealous because somebody's getting paid more, more than you are, but they're not, they're doing, you know, less than half of the work that you are. That, that sort of mentality doesn't exist in people that are, that are self actualized. It doesn't. And I believe, you know, genetically, through evolution, most people are capable of self-actualizing and, and maintaining self-actualization, becoming an op optimized individual, uh, you know? I'm telling you, dude, and, and it, this has been vetted, like, I'm, I'm telling you, this can work. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm shutting up now. Uh, uh, this is my open letter. Dude, I, I need help. You've got a platform. You're concerned about this shit. And I'm telling you, dude, there is something here. I've spent four years fucking, sh you know, just sifting through this craziness. Uh, I've been building simulations, you know, I'm trying to really figure out what's happening here. And for sure, 100% guarantee the use of money, just the use of money, increases the entropy of our socioeconomic system, of our you know, material global system by, I, I can't even, uh, okay. The latest sim that I ran shows an increase, uh, just after the first 40 hours of like, what was it? It was so stupid big, <sighs> a lot, like, like, like mind numbing a lot. Like, I can't believe we are, we're just fucking up this bad a lot. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. I, I'm sorry, this was way longer than I wanted to wanted it to be, but I need, I, I just, I, I don't know why I decided to do this. You seem like a smart dude. You, even though you think you're dumb, you're not dumb, dude. You're, you're a searcher, you're a seeker of truth, and you're, you've got a good head on your shoulders. You call people out on their bullshit. Like, you're a good guy. I, I can tell you're a good dude, and you're not dumb. <laughs> You are a good guy and you're, 
you have that mentality to where, where you want to understand things. That's not dumb. That's being an intelligent man. And so I'm just hoping that somehow this makes it to you and that you hear this, like really hear this, that you hear the truth in what I'm saying because this is fucking big. This is, this is the blinder that we've all had on for the last, <laughs> how many, you know, tens of thousands of years. <sighs> okay, I, I really do need to start getting ready for tomorrow and, and wrapping shit up, but if you did watch this, thanks. Uh, if you don't believe me, <laughs> I can prove it to you. Uh, it would take a much longer conversation, but um, just <sighs> weird. This is weird. I don't even know if I'm going to put this up. <sighs> this, is, this is kind of embarrassing. It just feels weird. But I feel so much pressure, dude. I, I Thank you if you watched this. Like, for real, I... Mind blown if you did. Uh, yeah. Um, take care. I, I hope, I hope that a lot of our crazy fucking nose dive that we're in. I know we can, but it, it, it's not even just a matter of doing this. It's a matter of waking people up and helping them realize that this blindfold that we all thought we needed, that we all thought is indispensable, that we cannot get rid of, or the world will collapse, is just the other way around. <laughs> like, pff, completely. It's maddening to fucking see this and to try to get people to see it and just, they don't, I mean, they're so brainwashed into believing that money is necessary that they simply cannot see it. It's fucking crazy. Like, like really fucking crazy, dude. All right, I, I gotta go. Thank you if you watch this. Sincerely, man. <sighs> Got shit to do. Take care.